everyone, welcome to my studio again. Uh, for those of you that don't already know, my name's Marion and I'm a mixed media artist based in March in Cambridgeshire and I'm on a mission to get you all art journaling. So this week um, we're going to take a look at backgrounds and what sort of media we can use to create backgrounds and colour and texture and loads of yummy stuff in our art journals. Now this is a massive topic, there are loads, literally loads, thousands, millions even, I don't know, ways of um, getting colour and texture and pattern and stuff into your art journal. So um, really we're only touching the surface of this in this short um, video tutorial, but there are loads and loads of extra ideas um, in the supplementary PDF that will be um, alongside the video. So please do take a look at that to get even more ideas um, than we're going to go through in this video. So we're going to have a look at backgrounds, how to get some colour on the pages. I'll demo a couple of techniques for you to see and talk you through some some sort of uh, some art materials and uh, more everyday items that you will probably all have around the house. So and again, as ever, if you're happy to share your creations with us once you've uh, had a play about, uh, we'd love to see what you're doing and what you're creating. So uh, absolutely no pressure. If you want to share what you've done with us, we would love to see it. Okay, so let's get going and uh, start filling those art journals. Yay, let's go. Okay, let's have a look at some media that we can use in our art journals. So paint is obviously um, the first thing that probably springs to most people's minds. Now I've got a selection here. These are all um, artist quality, quite expensive paints, acrylic, watercolour, gouache, that sort of stuff. If you've got this sort of paint already um, because of other hobbies that you do, that's absolutely fine. You know, use it if you've got it. But these are really quite expensive. Um, so if you haven't got much money to spare, and who has at the moment, um, look at other alternatives. Have a scout around your house. You know, if you've got children or grandchildren, have they got paint sets? This is a kid's paint set. I think it was two or three pounds, not at all expensive. Lovely uh, range of colours, brilliant to use. Um, and absolutely nothing wrong with it. It might not be the most highly pigmented paint in the world, but still great to use if you've got it you can always layer them these this is a great make really inexpensive for what they are uh, these come in under a fiver or so and available online really highly pigmented really vivid colors so um really inexpensive and worth it um and i'm going to use these later on to show you a couple of techniques uh, this is another kids set i think this came from ikea Nice selection of colours again, nice big pans. This set comes with brushes as well. Um, and, it, and it's just, you know, no, lovely bright colours, perfectly usable. Um, I'm really not a snob about art. Um, it's, I don't, you know, don't like to be precious about it. And we're talking about art journaling here, where there's no rules, you can't do it right or wrong. And I, I have an absolute belief in using what you have. Why not? So I'll bang on about that, no doubt, quite a lot. I have even used <laughs> emulsion as paint um, in art journals. Uh, so these are tester pots. If you've got a bit left over in the tin from when you painted the bathroom, break it out and use it up. That's what I say. So I mean, with paint, obviously you could just slap one or two colours on to a page and have a painted base as your background. So moving on from paint, to pens and pencils and crayons love working with crayons you know obviously really accessible and inexpensive come in every color of the rainbow so um i always um love working with crayons they're such a um oh i don't know what the word is i'm i'm struggling for but they're such a thing from your childhood a thing that can you know give you freedom in what you're doing you know grab your art journal and have a scribble how lovely is that color i like that one you know the colors are fantastic so don't um don't overlook crayons because they really are worth um investigating and using in your journals pens and pencils you can again um spend fortune on pens and pencils 
uh, you know, some of the pens I've got are like three or four pounds a, a pop, and you know, who can afford to go out and buy half a dozen of those? Certainly not me at the moment, <laughs> or anyone I'm sure, but why do you need to when you can use so many other things? You know, these are just kids' coloured pencils, nothing wrong with those, every colour go in there. Um, I've used all sorts of pens, fine liners, kids' felt tip pens, permanent markers, if you want really bold um, uh, bold colours in your journals. Um, even if you only use pens to sort of do a border or a doodle or, or a really minor part of a page, they're still a good thing to have. So uh, these these are cool as well. These are kids' pens that are, I think you can see, um, they have... Um, a, a stamp on the end of the pen that's sort of inked. So these are flowers and arrows and stars. So they're quite cool. If you've got kids or grandchildren, you might, you know, have a set of them knocking about. Another great one, which I don't have here, um, but these are really cool. If you're a bingo freak and you have bingo dabbers, they're fantastic for making lovely splatters on a page. They just need to sort of give them, give them a squeeze so you've got plenty of ink in the in the base, in the foamy base bit of them. Uh, and then give them a thwack down on the page and you get a lovely, pew, lovely little splatter. So pens and pencils, you need lots of those. And you'll have lots about the house, I'm sure. So now we're getting into the realms of odd things as well now. So these are artist pastels. A very mucky box of artist pastels. Um, you may or may not have these knocking about. Uh, if you haven't, chalk. This is just a selection of kids coloured chalk, you know, for using on the pavement or the blackboard or you know wherever wherever they use it. Just as good as pastels, probably not in as many colours, um, but still perfectly usable and usually you'll get blue and green, purple, red, orange, plus white of course. And that's perfectly usable. If you don't have expensive fixative and you want to use pastels, because um, you need to fix them so they don't all smudge on your page, just break out the hairspray. Um, squirt that over your page. That's your pastels or chalks fixed, and you're good to go. So again, you don't need to buy a, a tin of expensive fixative. And another alternative to chalks and pastels, while I'm talking about those, makeup. Now this one is probably a little bit surprising to some. Um, so these are all sort of powder, blusher or eyeshadow in a you know wide variety of colours, just stuff I had lying around to oh I can't open that one. But it's really shiny and I want to show you. There we go. Look, lovely metallics. So yeah, makeup is it works in exactly the same way as pastels and chalk would work. Um, you very often have an applicator with them, so you can use that to apply them to your page or use your brushes or your fingers, whatever you fancy. And obviously these are a wide range of different colours here and they come in every colour under the sun, I'm sure. Most of the ladies watching We'll have a bit of eyeshadow or powder or blusher knocking about that you could use in the same way. So that's always a good thing to investigate your makeup bag, see what else you've got in there that you can use. On the same topic um, of makeup, um, going back to pens and pencils, uh, these are all eyeliners in quite groovy colours that I found knocking about in the cupboard. If you have no other pencil in the house, you might have an eyeliner, so don't dismiss those. Go and have a rummage and see if you've got an eyeliner. Now, I haven't got... Oh, these are oil pastels, so I have got them out. Um, let me show you. Oil pastels are a bit like crayons, but they are... If I can get the foam out to show you. They're um, much softer and smooshier, uh, and you can blend them on the page. But if you don't have oil pastels and that's not a, such a common item if you don't have oil pastels um how about lipstick <laughs> i bet all the i bet all the ladies are loving me getting you to use your lipstick up see look how beautifully smooshy and blendable lipstick is on the page and of course lipsticks you get in all manner of colors i'm sure you've all got you know nice bit of red or sparkly or 
I can't, I don't know what I've got here. That's another pink one. I seem to have picked a whole load of pink, but I do have lipsticks in other colours. But I'm sure you'll have a range of lipsticks. So if you want to have a go at something in the realm of oil pastels, look to your makeup bag again and give those a whirl. Because that is always uh, good for a play. On the subject of playing, I think um, I've probably already said something similar to this, but art journaling is partially about play. Uh, it's about experimenting, playing with new materials like makeup and chalk and you know all sorts of things. Um, but you can't really, you know, if you have a play about with your lipstick and you don't like it, stick something over the top. You know, cover it up, tear the page out. It's not. Um, it's, we're not talking about pieces of art that are going to hang in a gallery or the next exhibition at Tate Modern. We're talking about expressing ourselves creatively, enjoying what we're doing, playing and learning, using what we've got and just having fun, really. So, um, yeah, don't be precious about it. You know, if you make marks on a page and you don't like them, add to them or cover them up or paint over them or, you know, there's always something you can do glue pages together you know if you don't like what you've done glue two together and then start again anyway sorry i digress from my materials so here we go uh this is food coloring i went and had a little rummage about in my pantry uh, when i was thinking about paint and how we could get color onto the page if we didn't have paint so these are all different food colorings that i found in my pantry and i had a little play about with them and they work just like ink really obviously they're that sort of consistency as well some of them are brighter than others uh, so I think some are more um, concentrated than others um, but they work perfectly well and they smell quite lovely as well and still in the kitchen what's this um, the this is tea this is um, I, I ferreted about in the well I didn't ferret about I didn't have to go far husband was having a or had a cup of tea uh, and his tea grounds were in his little uh, his little strainer thing, so I've tipped him into a dish to show you. Um, tea and coffee make brilliant paint for backgrounds. Um, you can make the coffee and tea as strong or as weak as you like, and get a range of depth of colour in there. You can also use, um, I mean, you can make instant coffee and use it as paint, but also use um, tea leaves like this and also coffee grounds as well. Um, to add to your page coffee grounds and tea grounds you could sort of dollop on while they're a little while they're damp not sopping wet but damp uh, and leave them on there until that's dried then brush them off and you get nice marks as well um, and just just a really you can get a really rich coffee colored lovely toffee brownies lovely from tea and coffee so and why have I got a lemon here <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember as kids doing this. I can I can remember doing this, but um, using lemon juice to write secret messages. So um, it's, it's as it was as a child. I squeezed a lemon, uh, or half of the lemon, and then I used a paintbrush to um, pop some onto a page, just doing random sort of blobs and squiggles, really, because I couldn't really see. It was white paper, and I couldn't really see what I was doing. So... Um, blobs and squiggles and dabs here and there uh, then when it was dry got my iron out so it's heat that makes this work so um, popped my paper with my lemon juice on in between uh, some baking parchment so if you've got baking parchment or grease proof something like that don't iron it directly with your iron or you'll get a sticky mess on your iron um, so put it between some baking parchment and then keep the iron on the move so you don't scorch the paper I had mine nice and hot, uh, just kept it moving. Uh, the longer you do it for, the deeper the colour will be. Um, so you could um, vary the pressure and time that you do it for and uh, see what you come up with. So we're still in the kitchen. <laughs> I've got my rather large jar of turmeric. Now turmeric occurred to me the other day. I've never actually used turmeric. Um, before but I thought well it does stain your um, <laughs> your utensils when you're making curry and stuff so I thought I'd have a, a go with that and I mixed up just a, a probably I don't know quarter of a teaspoon um, of turmeric with just water out of the tap and uh, mixed it up stirred it up a bit until it was more paint like um, popped it on a page with a brush and it's cool it looked really groovy 
it's it was a bit grainy um but i think uh, once it's dry um you can brush that off if you wanted to or if you don't want to i think it just gives you a bit of a more darker tones in places than in others so that's a few wet materials that we've been through uh, hopefully you found some inspiration there do go off around your house <laughs> and think about what you've already got that you might be able to use because I'm sure in addition to all of this there's loads more that I won't have forgotten or stuff that I don't have that you have so think out of the box you know see what you've got in in the realm of things that could be paint or will make marks or give you colour and uh, I hope that some of you will share some of your colourful um, pages with us as we go along Okay, so a quick mention about how to get your paint um, on your paper, what you're going to use. Uh, oh, my little studio helper has appeared, apologies for that. So I've got a whole range of brushes here. Um, oh dear, Rufus. So I've got uh, decorating brushes, kids paint brushes of varying sizes. None of these are particularly expensive. You can of course, do you like those? You can, of course, apply, um, spend a fortune on um, expensive brushes, uh, but there's no need to. Um, I've also got some cotton buds here. I've got a foam applicator. Again, raid the kids' um, stuff. Um, this, these foamy, rubbery uh, sort of tools are quite useful that kids use a lot. Um, so have a look around, see what you've already got that you can apply paint with. You could also use stuff like um, foam. Uh, if you've got you know some foam that you could chop up and use you could use um, scrumpled up newspaper to dab onto your pages you could use cloth you could use wipes um, you don't need any specialist equipment so um, yeah have a look around see what you've got and um, yeah you're good to apply paint and stuff with whatever you've got Okay, so, of course, um, you don't need to use wet media at all to create backgrounds in your art journal. Um, you can use lots of paper-based stuff as well. So let's have a quick look through some of these. So envelopes, I talked about envelopes last week. Um, you get all these lovely, predominantly blue, but you get other colours and patterns um, in envelopes as well. They make a great background. Uh, so you can layer them, you could do stripes, you could do uh, torn blobs and scraps, or you could actually cut them and have nice sharp shapes. Uh, so envelopes are really useful to use. Magazines. Um, I use a lot of magazine stuff in my um, collage work and my art journals. I have favourites. This is one of them. House of Interiors because you get loads of lovely pattern and colour and stuff in there. Um, but use whatever magazines you've got. You know, I've got a variety of things here. People give me magazines as well because they know I use them a lot. Um, dependent on what, if you're, you know, if you're doing a themed journal and it's something you're interested in anyway, you may well have um, magazines that cater to that. Like for instance, if you're a gardener and you're doing a garden themed journal, garden magazines are cool. But any magazine will have um, textures and patterns and colours and words if you're looking for words. So magazines are great fodder for um, uh, using in your art journal as backgrounds. Let's get rid of those. In the same way newspaper, um, is useful as well. I often use newspaper if I haven't got much else to hand, um, so don't dismiss that either. And also stuff like um, puzzle book pages, shopping list, letters, stuff that you've got knocking around the house. You might have ticket stubs, you know, all sorts of stuff that um, are quite usually um, pale in colour, so they make good backgrounds if you don't want completely blank pages, you know, the blank page syndrome that we talked about last week. So lots of that is good fodder. So what have I got here? Um, tissue paper. So I keep any piece of tissue paper that um, I'm ever given. Um, presents come wrapped in it and I squirrel it away and keep it. So 
So these are a variety of plain colours. You get patterns, you get a bit of sparkle. You can get some lovely tissue paper patterns. So you might well have some knocking about uh, in your present stash, maybe. Um, same goes for wrapping paper as well. Um, one of the good things about tissue paper is a lot of the plain coloured stuff uh, you can lay onto a wet page and the colour will leach out of it. So that's another way of getting colour on your page. Uh, still on the same lines as tissue, I've got a piece of dressmaking pattern here. I love using this in um, collages and in my art journals. One of the things I like to do um, when I'm collaging in my journals is layers. Um, and it's, so it's always good to use things that are a bit see-through because you can build your layers um, on your page. So dressmaking pattern features a lot in my um, collaged backgrounds. So if you've got, don't don't use someone's pattern that they're making something from, but if you've got an old one that you're never going to use again, then that's a good one. I love all these lines and blobs and of course they've got words on as well which sometimes can be quite amusing to place in particular places. So um, that's dressmaking tissue. And napkins. Now I love using napkins in my backgrounds and I recently discovered a website that sells napkins individually so you don't have to buy a whole pack of 20 <laughs> um, which with the best will in the world I would never get through 20 um, napkins <laughs> really ever so the single buying them singly is wonderful and you can of course get all kinds of patterns and designs how gorgeous are these look I've got some music uh, pebbles blobs, um, all sorts of stuff. Now the thing with napkins is if you are going to use napkins um, on your backgrounds, uh, two things to remember. Don't try and glue onto the napkin because it will fall apart. It won't stand you going over it with glue, glue stick. It's quite fragile like that. So always glue your page first. So glue into your journal or if you're using loose glue onto your, put glue onto your page and then stick your napkin onto it. If you haven't got enough glue around the edges, you can always go round and um, you know finish off and make sure it's all glued down. Um, don't try and work on top of it until it's completely dry because it, it really is quite delicate. If you sort of used a pen or a pencil on top of it and it was still damp, it'll just rip it. So, and the other thing to remember is most napkins like this one are three ply. So you can see I've peeled this apart to show you. So when you're using them as backgrounds, you need to only use the top layer. So um, it can be a bit of a fiddly faff sometimes, but um, peel back those two layers so you haven't got them. Sometimes, like with this one, you get um, a secondary image on the next page, um, which is quite subtle. So you can also use that one for um, backgrounds too, just in a, so you get a more subtle, gentle image of whatever your napkin is. So I love using napkins. So this technique is uh, resist painting, um, which is super easy to do and always looks great when it's done. Um, looks lovely in uh, art journals. Now I'm working on a big sheet here because I want to show you different um, things that I've done on here. You could work directly in your books. Um, so if you want to work on a page in your art journal, that's absolutely fine. If you're a bit nervous of that because you're trying something new, then do like I've done and uh, find yourself um, some paper outside of your journal. Or if you've made an elastic band journal like last week, um, take a page out and work on it individually if that's um, you know makes you happier. Don't want any of you to be anxious about this stuff. So with resist painting, um, you uh, take a rubbing from something using a crayon or an oil pastel. Uh, or even a candle, I've done it with a candle in the past, whatever you have to hand. You take a rub in from something and then you smoosh lovely wet watercolour over the top or food colouring, as I have done the one with food colouring today. So just to show you what I've got on here, I've got a whole set of these um, children's rubbing plates. Um, plastic, double-sided with different patterns, uh, and I use these a lot. I do have a thing for spirals and circles. I love using spirals and circles. So um, this one is this rubbing in the top right corner. So you may not have a set of children's rubbing plates, um, but if you haven't, don't worry, because there's lots of other things that you can use. 
So here with the blue, this blue strip, that is the top of my radiator in the studio. Um, and I've done that with oil pastel. I know some of you won't have oil pastels, but I just wanted to show you one with oil pastel so you know what it looks like. This green down here is the side of a sort of ornate box thing I've got in the studio. It's quite a random pattern. Um, while I was doing that, the paper slipped so it doesn't match up, but um, with this sort of thing, I don't think that necessarily matters. I'm just after texture and colour uh, in the pattern, so if it moves, so be it. I don't mind that. Uh, this one here in the red on this side, I found this, um, I guess it's mathematical, is it? Um, stencil, it's got a ruler on the edge, so I'm thinking mathematical or architecture or something like that. Um, stencil, so I've done a rubbing over the top of that, lots of nice circles. And then I've got a couple of things, everyone will have something like this knocking around the house. This is a bit of packaging, um, I don't know what from. Um, maybe cakes, I don't know, biscuits, who knows. Um, but I've saved it, never throw anything away. Uh, and this rubbing here is from this. So you get some groovy. And this last one, um, I think, I wasn't sure where this came from, but I've now noticed it says uh, melee on here. So I think it probably came from a hoover. So some sort of, I don't know, filter or thing in a hoover. And that's this hexagonal one here. I lied, that's not the last one. This one here. This little bit of red down here, that was blank. So I thought I'd fill it with something. And this is, I just laid a few elastic bands on the desk and rubbed over those. So that's all of my rubbings. And now what we're going to do is add some watercolour. So I've got these watercolours uh, that I talked about in the other video about wet media. You could use different watercolours, uh, you could use food colouring as I said just now, um, I've used food colouring, so let's have a look. So you need your watercolour to be nice and juicy and wet for this, you don't want it to be too dry, um, oh, it's probably a mistake using these new because they need a bit of wetting down to get them going. There we go, so and then, oh, Rufus, sorry folks. Uh, so wet them down and just run them over your, lightly over your rubbings. So I'm going to use it now. Oh, I've caught the orange with my brush. So, but, uh, so I've got red and orange going on. You'll see that it will resist. What's underneath will resist. So I'm going to carry on and put colours over some of these other ones. So we've got a nice bit of blue there, nice and wet. Oh, I'm so sorry, my cat is crashing about in the background here. So I've got a bit of bleed into that, but which again, doesn't bother me. Um, if you were doing this for a page in your journal, um, you wouldn't necessarily have a big sheet like this. So if you was just doing one pattern. Um, so you can see I'm just running my brush, nice wet paint over the top and getting Lots of lovely colour. What colour is that? That's blue. So we'll go over here with that. So you can see as I go across the crayon, oh, wrong colour, um, that it's resisting. Now, sometimes this will work better than other times. Um, I think it depends on what sort of crayons you've got, what sort of paint you're using, but it's definitely worth, oh, look at that blue, that's gorgeous. Um, it's definitely worth the trial and error um, of seeing what happens. Now I've got really dark water and I was gonna use yellow and orange. So this could be interesting. Well, I'm so sorry about my Rufus here. So a bit of orange over here over my radiator grill. Oh, I've caught the green again, so there we are. And then we've just got this corner left. So let's have a look at, oh, I don't know what color to use. Is that purple? Let's have a bit of purple. So purple, Rufus, should we have a bit of purple? <laughs> That's it, you sit there and supervise. Hope you all like cats. There we go. So I've got my purple over the green. That's nice, I like that. That's a nice popping colour. And I'll just try a bit of, I've got quite dark water now. If you're gonna go from dark colours to light colours, you probably want to refresh your water. Um, that's probably a yellow on there just to cover that up. There we go. So that's my entire sheet. I'm just dabbing in the, God, I don't want any white. There we go. So, and that's all there is to it. So um, take a rubbing. 
and put watercolour or food colour or um, you know any water down paint over the top, see what you get. So um, I'm going to let this dry now and then I will show you the finished version. And you can see the lots of lovely colour and pattern ready to go in your journals. So another nice, easy and fun to do uh, background that you can do with paper is paper weaving. Now I've got a page here that's almost finished. I didn't want to uh, have you watch me for five minutes while I fiddled with bits of paper. So I'm partially finished, so I'll tell you what I've been doing. So I've taken a page from my uh, elastic band journal that I made last week. And on this page I have, you can see, I've cut vertical strips all the way across the page. Uh, now I've gone down to this line here, leave a, leave a gap at the bottom so it doesn't all fall apart. Uh, and then I've started weaving horizontally. So I'm using a nicely contrasting paper so you can see the effect you get uh, when you're done. Nice dark paper. You can use whatever you've got of course. I always think words look rather nice so if you've got book pages, magazine pages or even something, a page of handwritten stuff. It could be um, gobbledygook because it doesn't matter if you're going to chop it up. Um, yeah, I always think that looks nice uh, interwoven with um, colour or pattern. So that's something to think about as well, but you can use absolutely anything you like. So then um, I've cut my contrasting paper into strips and I've just been weaving them using, I'll do the last one to show you, the sort of under over method. So you get under the first, over the next, under over. Just keep repeating that. And then when you do you know, your next row, you would start with going over rather than under. So you're alternating. So nice and easy sure we've all probably did a bit of paper weaving at school. I love going back to my youth. There we go, so that's my last row in. So obviously when, you're, um, when you've finished, you need to finish off your edges. So what I've done down here, you can see I've chopped off all of this extra overhang on both sides, and then I've just glued the tabs down. So on the front and then also on the back. Up here, because uh, you've got all these loose ends, um, I might stick, uh, you can either stick something behind, so if you don't want to work on this when you turn over your page, you can stick a sheet of paper on there, so you can stick all those ends down, um, or I might um, stick something over them to finish it off. It's um, kind of up to you really, as long as you, uh, you might need to put some glue under your last strip, so you can just kind of pop it up like that, pop a bit of glue on and then you're done. There you go, and nice paper weaving. So um, you get this nice checkerboard regular effect, but you could also cut your strips different widths. You could also go vertically. If you wanted to cut your strips this way on the page and weave vertically, that's cool too. Uh, you could cut your strips different widths. So you could have fat ones and thin ones, and you could do that also with your strips that you cut. You could tear as well. If you don't want cut regular, you could do torn strips. And of course you could also weave, um, rather than doing under, over, alternate, you could go maybe over two, under one, over two, under two, over one. You can make up your own pattern or it could be entirely random. And obviously you'll get not a regular effect like this, but something more funky and irregular. So there you go, I'll finish this off and then show you what the, uh, what the finished page looks like.